So welcome you all to principles of organic synthesis. So far we have studied the formation of carbon-carbon bonds using acid as well as base. Today we will start the new model where we will study the formation of carbon-carbon bonds using organ metal reagents. The principles of the formation of carbon-carbon bonds using organ metal reagents are shown in this slide. As all of you know very well, when a bond is polarized, it can be readily reacted with electrophile or nucleophile. For example, if you take methyl iodide and acetone, as examples, if you look at the electronegativity of carbon here, 2.5, so iodine is 2.7. oxygen is 3.5. If you look at the bond, carbon iodine bond, and this iodine is more electronegative comparing to carbon, therefore the bond pair is polarized towards iodine. In other words, the carbon is electrophilic in nature since the bond pair is polarized towards iodine. And similarly, when you look at this one, a stone, the carbonyl group, and if you C, oxygen is more electronegative comparing to carbon. Therefore, this bipond pair is polarized towards oxygen. So, in other words, if you look at here both this carbon as well as this carbonyl carbon, they are electrophilic in nature. So, therefore, when you happen to react with the nucleophile, for example, if you react with OH minus, it can readily undergo reaction with this carbon since electrophilic nature, it can undergo substitution reaction to produce methanol as a product. Similarly, if you take this acetone, if you react with, for example, amine. it can readily undergo addition reaction to give the salt as a product. So, if the carbon is bonded with the electronegative atom, the bond is polarized towards the electronegative atom. In other words, the carbon is electrophilic nature which can readily undergo reaction with the nucleophile. The first one involves a substitution reaction, second one involves addition reaction. On the other hand, let us take this example once again, methyl iodide and acetone. Now let us compare them with the organometallic reagent, for example, methyl magnesium bromide, methyl lithium. Here, if you look at this one, here this carbon is bonded with lithium. This lithium and magnesium electropositive element, this is electronegative element. Now, if you see the electronegativity of lithium is 1 and magnesium is 1.3. Already we know that electronegativity of carbon is 2.5. You look at this one. Now, the bond pair is polarized towards carbon. So, whenever a carbon is bonded with electropositive element, the bond pair is polarized towards carbon. So in other words, if you look at this one, this bond is polarized more because the more electropositive, less electronegative this one. Therefore, this bond is more polarized towards the carbon. Therefore, now this methyl group can act as a nucleophile or base. Since it is electron rich, it can act as a base, it can act as a nucleophile. 
Now, if you look at these two substrate, methyl iodide, and if you take, for example, this first one, Grignard reagent, methyl magnesium bromide, since the carbon is nucleophilic in nature, now this can undergo reaction with this one substitution reaction as we have seen earlier. Now, you will be able to generate ethane as the product. If you take a stone, it can undergo reaction as we have seen earlier, addition reaction, you will be able to generate tertiary butanol as the product. Similarly, if you take methyl lithium, this also will undergo substitution reaction with methyl iodide, the addition reaction with acetone, you will be able to get ethane and tertiary butanol as the product. Therefore, it depends upon the atom that is bonded with carbon. If electronegative atom is bonded with carbon, then the bond pair is polarized toward the electronegative atom. In other words, the carbon is positively polarized, which can act as electrophile. Nucleophile then undergo addition or substitution reaction with the carbon. On the other hand, if the carbon is bonded with electropositive element, the bond pair is polarized towards carbon. So, in that case, the carbon can act as a nucleophile or a base. They can readily undergo reaction with the electrophile to give the addition or substitution products. The reactivity of the organometallic reagents depend on the metal present in the system. Let us look at the reactivity of methyl lithium, methyl magnesium bromide. If we compare the reactivity of these two reagents, methyl iodide, this can source great reactivity comparing to that methyl magnesium bromide. If you compare the reactivity of methyl lithium with methyl magnesium bromide, methyl lithium shows greater reactivity comparing to methyl magnesium bromide because this bond is polarized much greater extent because lithium is more electropositive and this bond is polarized towards carbon greater extent comparing to the bond between this methyl group and magnesium. Therefore, this can act as a more efficient nucleophile comparing to this one when you do reaction with methyl iodide. In summary, if the carbon is bonded with the electronegative element, the carbon is positively polarized, which can readily undergo reaction with the nucleophiles. On the other hand, if the carbon is bonded with an electropositive element, the carbon is then negatively polarized. It can act as a nucleophile or base. In case of organometallic reagents, the reactivity of the reagent depends upon the nature of the metal atom present in the reagent. Now, let us look at the reaction of Grignard reagents. An example shown here, the isopropyl chloride undergoes reaction with magnesium to give this isopropyl magnesium chloride, which leads to one to addition with this aldehyde to give this secondary alcohol as a product, where you generate a new carbon-carbon bond between this carbon of the isopropyl chloride and carbonyl carbon, which is shown in red color. Now, let us look at the preparation of the Grignard reagents. The reaction of variety of alkyl halides are shown. The first example involves the reaction of bromobutane with the magnesium 
in THF it gives the uh, corresponding alkyl magnesium bromide. The next example involves the reaction of cyclohexyl chloride which reacts with magnesium to give the corresponding cyclohexyl magnesium chloride. The next example involves the reaction of alkyl chloride with magnesium where you can see the presence of a acetal functional group which is stable in basic conditions. You can try to readily react this alkyl chloride without affecting the acetal functional group to give this alkyl magnesium chloride. Similarly, you can also try to react this allyl chloride with the magnesium to give this allyl magnesium chloride. If you look at all these halides, the allyl chloride shows greater reactivity comparing to that simple alkyl chloride. And if you see the reactivity order of the halides, alkyl iodide shows greater reactivity comparing to alkyl bromide which shows greater reactivity comparing to the corresponding chloride. This is the reactivity order of the halides, the formation of the Grignard reagents. So, here shown the experiment where you can see the preparation of the Grignard reagent. The Grignard reagent is sensitive to moisture and air therefore, you have to carry out the reaction under extremely dry conditions. If you look at this one, uh, you have to use a 2 or 3 naked round part of flask as shown here. Since the reaction is exothermic, you have to have a water condenser which is connected to inner atmosphere and this side you can see here they add the alkyl or aryl halide uh, which is in THF or ether they add drop wise. First what you have to do, you have to take a pure magnesium since magnesium is coated with magnesium oxide when you keep it long time it will be oxidized it will be you will see the magnesium oxide therefore, you have to remove the magnesium oxide. One of the way is you can try to wash with the dilute hydrochloric acid then wash it with water remove the acid dry very well you will have you can remove the magnesium oxide you can have the pure magnesium turnings once we have the well dried magnesium turnings you can take in the round part of flask under inner atmosphere this flask also should be flame dried then you have to calculate how much solvent you need to make the Grignard reagent because if too much concentrated also they can undergo self coupling to avoid that you have to have a particular concentration. Suppose if you need one molar solution you know the how much you are taking. So, accordingly you calculate the quantity of solvent then when you take the magnesium turnings inside. So, you add a little bit of the solvent you then try to add halide in uh, solvent drop wise. If you have alkyl or aryl iodide they can readily undergo reaction to give this Grignard reagent. On the other hand if you take alkyl or aryl bromide they are less reactive they can also undergo reaction. When you take the corresponding chloro compounds they are less reactive in that case you have to add a pinch of iodine. So, the reaction can be initiated once the reaction started then you can add your alkyl aryl chloride drop wise. So, you can see the color of the reagent is like this you cannot isolate the reagent you have to make the reagent sit to and then once if the reagent is completely made then you can add your electrophile you have to dissolve in solvent then you have to add a drop wise you can carry out the addition or substitution reaction once the reaction is completed then you have to uh, very carefully quench with proton source you can get the corresponding 
addition or substitution product. If you look at here, you start with magnesium 0 and which undergoes addition with this carbon halogen bond, you get the Grignard reagent. So, if you look at here oxygen state of this magnesium do, this means the reaction takes place via oxidative insertion. So, magnesium undergoes oxidative insertion with this uh, alkyl halide to give this Grignard reagent. Here, the oxygen state of the magnesium is 2. Now, let us see the reaction of the Grignard reagent, which is one of the very important and powerful reagent in organic synthesis to make a carbon carbon bond. Now, let us see some of the very common and important organ transformations using Grignard reagent. The properties of Grignard reagents are shown here. They are basic in nature. So, they can if you have an acidic system, then they can try to react, they can deprotonate the proton. They are strong nucleophile, they can readily undergo substitution addition reactions. They are sensitive to air or moisture, then you have to keep in dry environment. They exist in aggregated forms which are stabilized by the solvent, usually we use THF ether as the solvent. And if you look at it here, this lone pair of the ether can uh, make chelation with this magnesium because this is Lewis acidic in nature. It can make chelation, it can stabilize the reagent, they exist uh, in aggregated form as shown here. Now, let us look at the reaction of Grignard reagents. The first example involves substitution reaction. If you look at here, this ethyl magnesium bromide undergoes reaction with this with allyl magnesium bromide via SN2 pathway to give this alkene as the product. And the next example involves the reaction coupling of benzyl chloride with this tocyl derivative to give this alkyl benzene in the presence of magnesium. Here the benzyl chloride first undergoes reaction with magnesium to form benzyl magnesium chloride. Once you form this one, now this can act as a nucleophile which can undergo reaction with this tocyl derivative via SN2 pathway to give this alkyl benzene as the product. This is a good example if you have alcohol. You can convert into the corresponding tocyl derivative. Once you form this one, now you can try to react with the Grignard reagent. This is a very good leaving group. In this way, you can try to make a carbon carbon bond between this carbon and this carbon of this Grignard reagent. And in this way, you can try to generate a new molecule. The next example involves the reaction of this trimethyl bromobenzene uh, with dimethyl sulfate in the presence of magnesium. Here also, first this trimethyl benzene undergoes reaction with magnesium to give the corresponding trimethylphenyl magnesium bromide. Once you generate that one, this can undergo substitution reaction. This is a, this is a very good leaving group. And in this way, you can make this uh, substituted benzene and in this way, you can try to introduce alkyl group, the aromatic ring. So, these are some of the examples for the substitution reactions. You can also try to couple two alkyl groups. For example, the first one involves uh, the coupling of ethyl bromide 
with allyl bromide. In this way, you can also make CC coupling between two alkyl substrates. The next one involves the coupling of this alkyl to acyl derivative with the benzyl bromide. This also you couple to alkyl systems using Rignard reagent. Uh, you can convert one of them is to corresponding Rignard reagent, then you can try to do substitution reaction to be able to generate this one. The next one involves the reaction with the magnesium, you make the Grignard reagent, then it can undergo substitution reaction, you can get this tetramethyl benzene as a product. Now, let us look at the application of Grignard reagent for the formation of primary alcohol. If you have alkyl chloride, for example, here cyclohexyl chloride, which can readily undergo reaction with magnesium, you will be able to form this cyclohexyl magnesium chloride. Once you form this one, which can readily undergo reaction with the formaldehyde as shown here, you will be able to generate this primary alcohol as the product. So, if you have paraformaldehyde, you can try to react with the Grignard reagent which can be uh, generated from alkyl or aryl or vinyl halides, they can readily undergo the addition reaction to give primary alcohol as a product. The next example involves the reaction of alkyne with the formaldehyde to give propargelic alcohol. In this reaction, the ethyl magnesium bromide undergoes reaction with this terminal alkyne. In this the ethyl group acts as a base, it can deprotonate this acidic proton, then you will convert into this the corresponding alkynyl magnesium bromide, you generate ethene as byproduct. Once you form this one, which can readily undergo addition reaction with this formaldehyde to give the corresponding magnesium salt. Once From this one, you can, when you do the workup, you will be able to generate propargelic alcohol as the product. The next example involves the reaction of aldehydes with the Grignard reagent to give secondary alcohols. In this, the reaction of this aldehyde with vinyl magnesium bromide can give this addition product. Once you form the alkoxy magnesium bromide, which you can convert into the allylic alcohol using acid hydrolysis. The second example involves the reaction of methyl magnesium chloride with this alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde. In this you look at it here, the reaction undergoes selectively in the carbonyl carbon. It has two electrophilic center. You have uh, one here, another one here. This is hard, this electrophilicity of this carbon is more comparing to that. Therefore, since this is strong nucleophile, it undergoes reaction with this hard electrophile to give this one additional product. Similarly, you can also try to react with this aldehyde with this isopropyl magnesium chloride to give the corresponding alcohol as a product. So, Grignard reagent can readily undergo addition reaction with aldehydes to give the corresponding alcohol as the products. Now, let us look at the reaction with the ketones. The first example involves the methyl cyclopropyl ketone which undergoes reaction with this homoallyl magnesium bromide to give the tertiary alcohol as a product. The next example involves the reaction of this bicyclic bromo derivative with this ketone. When you react this alkyl bromide with magnesium, you will be able to generate this magnesium bromide. Once you form this one, now which can undergo addition reaction with the carbonyl group. In this way, you will be able to generate this tertiary alcohol as a product, which is an important molecule we use for. Parkinson disease. The next reaction involves the reaction of ester with phenyl magnesium bromide. 
just we have seen, if you have ketone, you can try to react with the Grignard reagent, you will be able to generate the tertiary alcohol. In this, the reaction of ester is shown with the excess phenyl magnesium bromide, you will be able to generate the tertiary alcohol as a product. First, the Grignard reagent undergoes one to addition reaction as we have seen earlier. So, you will be able to generate uh, this intermediate with one equivalent of phenyl magnesium bromide. Once you form this one, the you have this is very good leaving group, ester group. This can be converted into this once you form this ketone. The ketone can undergo further reaction with so you will be able to form alcohol as a product. Therefore, if you have two equivalent of the Grignard reagent, they can readily undergo addition with the ester and you will be able to generate the tertiary alcohol as the product. The next example involves the reaction of lactone with the two equivalent of methyl magnesium bromide. First, the one uh, the reaction of the methyl magnesium bromide with this carbonyl group can generate This ketone, once you form this one, which can undergo further reaction with another equivalent of methyl magnesium bromide, and you will be able to generate the tertiary alcohol as a product. So, if you look at the reactivity of the ketone and ester, ketone is more reactive comparing to ester. Therefore, as soon as you form the ketone, which can readily undergo a reaction with Greener reagent, then it will be converted into tertiary alcohol. Therefore, if you have the ester, if you try to react with the excess uh, Greener reagent, you can readily convert it into tertiary alcohol as a product. So far, we have seen three uh, types of uh, reactions for the formation of uh, alcohols. If you have uh, formaldehyde, you can try to react the Grignard reagent, you will be able to generate a primary alcohol as the product. If you have substituted aldehyde, you can try to react. In this way, you will be able to generate secondary alcohol as the product. On the other hand, if you have ketone, ketone can readily undergo reaction with the Grignard reagent, you will be able to form tertiary alcohol as the product. In addition to that, if you have ester, or lactone, they also can undergo reaction with the Grignard reagent. We use excess Grignard reagent, you can try to convert the ester into tertiary alcohol as the product. So, now we have seen four types of reactions. First, we have seen the substitution reaction. If you have a good living group, you can try to use Greener reagent is a nucleophile, they can undergo SN2 reaction, substitution reaction, depends upon the nature of the substrates. You can construct a carbon carbon bond. On the other hand, if you have carbonyl groups like aldehydes, ketones, esters, they can act as electrophile, they can readily undergo addition reaction with Greener reagent to give alcohol as the product. Now, let us look at the reaction with carbon dioxide. The first example involves the reaction of alkyl bromide with magnesium. You will be able to generate the alkyl magnesium bromide, which can readily undergo reaction with the carbon dioxide by a one to addition reaction. You will be able to generate
this salt which when you do the work up it will be converted into carboxylic acid similarly we have this bicyclic chloro derivative you can try to also react with magnesium you make the corresponding alkyl magnesium chloride which can readily undergo reaction with the carbon dioxide you will be able to generate this bicyclic compound with carboxylic acid the mechanism of this reaction shown here the alkyl bromide undergoes oxidative insertion with the magnesium to give this alkyl magnesium bromide once you form this one which undergoes addition with this carbon dioxide to give this salt once if you have this one which can be converted into carboxylic acid using proton source there are two possibilities when you go for the mechanism of the reaction of uh, grignard reagent the carbonyl compounds the first one involves bond breaking and bond formation of between this uh, magnesium and this methyl group as well as this methyl group and the carbonyl carbon all take at the same time what you do here you make a new bond between the magnesium and oxygen at the same time you also break this old bond between the magnesium and methyl group and you also form new bond between the magnesium and carbonyl carbon you also break the by bond between the oxygen and this may take place as shown here and the is by a concerted pathway both the bond breaking and bond formation takes place simultaneously you will be able to generate this alkoxy magnesium bromide which can be converted into the alcohol after work up the other possibility is that two molecule of the grignard reagent can involve as shown here through six membered transition state as shown here this can now here so now in this way you can try to form uh, this addition product you generate in this case this so magnesium derivative and where you generate magnesium bromide which when you do the work up you will be able to form uh, this alcohol so these are the two approaches one is the first one involves a four centered transition state the sec next one involves the six centered transition state these are proposed in the literature however this mechanism is very complicated see these are the some of the possibilities available for the addition of the grignard reagent to the carbonyl compounds and the next one is the reaction of nitrile if you have the nitrile that also can undergo reaction with the grignard reagent to give ketone as a product the mechanism of this reaction shown here so the grignard reagent can undergo addition with this carbon nitrogen double bond you can generate this intermediate once if we form this one when you do the work up you will be able to generate the ketamines which when you do the hydrolysis it will be converted into ketone as the product so if you have the nitrile it can be readily converted into ketone what you do here you do the addition you get the ketamine and once if you have this one when you do the hydrolysis you will be able to generate ketone as the product in place of nitrile you can also use amide the next example involves amide this also can undergo readily addition reaction with magnesium bromide to give a ketone as a product the mechanism is shown here so addition reaction of this methyl magnesium bromide to this carbonyl group can give this intermediate which can be converted into ketone as shown here when you do the acid work up you protonate this once if we have this one this can lose this methoxymethylamine you can get ketone as the product so these are the some of the common reactions we have seen so in addition to that in recent years grignard reagent also find a uh, important place in cross coupling reactions for the carbon carbon bond formation 
Here an example shown. If you have alkyl or aryl magnesium chloride bromide green water reagent, they can readily undergo coupling reaction with uh, aryl alkyl halide uh, via CC bond formation in the presence of nickel and uh, palladium based catalyst systems. If you look at the first example, it involves the coupling of this 4 methoxychlorobenzene, which can undergo a coupling reaction with this phenyl magnesium chloride in the presence of nickel COD complex to give this biphenyl derivative. The next example is the coupling of the heterocyclic systems where reaction of 2 bromopyridine with uh, thiophene magnesium bromide is shown in the presence of nickel 2 complex via CC coupling reaction. The third example involves the coupling of alkyl magnesium bromide with alkyl bromide. In this way, you can make a long alkyl chain via CC bond formation. So, this nickel catalyst reaction is found to be effective in the presence of 13 beta diene. So, you can also carry out this CC coupling reactions using palladium as catalyst. But in this case, if you look at here, the nickel is found to be more efficient. So, these coupling reaction, the coupling of Grignard reagent with alkyl or aryl halides are known as Kumura coupling. When you look at the reactivity order, when you use nickel as catalyst, the chloro derivative shows greater reactivity comparing to bromo and iodo compounds. For example, if you have the alkyl chloride, which shows greater reactivity comparing to alkyl bromide. That shows enhanced reactivity comparing to alkyl iodide when you use nickel as catalyst. On the other hand, when you use palladium as catalyst, the reactivity order is uh, reverse, which shows greater reactivity comparing to the alkyl bromide, which is more reactive comparing to alkyl chloride. So, when you use palladium as catalyst, the iodide derivatives, alkyl iodide shows greater reactivity comparing to alkyl bromide, which shows greater reactivity more, uh, which is more reactive comparing to alkyl chloride. And when you take nickel, the reactivity order is just opposite. So, when you go for the mechanism of this reaction, it involves zero oxygen state. Once if we have this one, the so this now can undergo reoxidative addition with this your alkyl or aryl halide. Let me write like this which can undergo oxidative addition. Once you form this one now, which can undergo reaction with your Grignard reagent via transmetallation. Let me write R M G B R. Now, Once if we generate this one, this can now can undergo reaction with the Grignard reagent through transmetallation to give so this now can undergo isomerization, cis trans isomerization, this is transmetallation,
to give so this can give the product by reductive elimination so you'll get or the cc coupled product and we uh, it can uh, complete the catalyst cycle so if you look at here first the metal undergoes oxidative addition with your halo derivative you form this intermediate once you form this one which undergoes reaction with your green hydrogen reagent through transmetallation then you generate this once you form this one it undergoes cis trans isomerization that can give this uh, intermediate once you have this one this can give the product by a reductive elimination to complete the catalyst cycle so this reaction has been widely used in uh, synthetic chemistry to couple alkyl aryl halides with the green hydrogen reagent to make variety of compounds these some of the examples are shown here the recent literature where you can find here the addition or reaction of this homoallyl magnesium bromide is shown with the ester to give the tertiary alkyl as a product so here you have to use two equivalent of the green hydrogen reagent so that uh, they can undergo addition first it can form the ketone that ketone can undergo further reaction and you will be able to generate the tertiary alkyl as a product the next example involves the reaction of phenyl magnesium bromide with the ketone and you can generate tertiary alkyl quantitative yield the third example involves the reaction of this uh, conjugated nitrile here in this reaction uh, the tertiary metal magnesium chloride reacts with this one you form butane once you form this one this can stabilize this double bond once if activate the double bond looks there's another molecule uh, the butyl magnesium bromide here reacts addition reaction therefore here green hydrogen reagent selectively undergoes reaction with the double bond to give this addition product so these are the some of the examples and the green hydrogen reagent is very uh, important which find broad utility in synthetic chemistry to make carbon carbon bond you can try to react with the uh, halides through substitution reaction then you can also react with carbonyl compounds like aldehydes ketones esters and you can get the addition products then we also have seen the coupling reaction you can try to for example if you have the alkali aryl halides you can also try to couple uh, in the presence of trans metal uh, catalyst like nickel and palladium which is called kumuda coupling in this way you can make construct new carbon carbon bond to produce diverse scaffolds so stereochemistry and if the alba carbon is chiral there is a possibility when you do the addition reaction with this uh, carbonyl group now you can try to generate a new stereocenic center because this now the carbonyl group is diastereostopic and this nucleophile can approach the both faces of the ketone but in this case example whatever they have given here this alba carbon is chiral which has a ketero atom when you have a hetero atom it can make chelation as shown here once you form this conformation now it can the nucleophile can approach uh, this is the most favored uh, pathway it can also approach this because if you look at this one this is very bulkier and if approach at this side then this can lead to the formation of this compound and if you approach this side you'll get this one if you look at here in this case the nucleophile reacts from this side then you generate this diastereum as the product therefore if you have chiral center next to the carbonyl group you can try to generate a new stereogenic center then you can generate the diastereomer 
the ratio of the diastema depends upon the substituent present. In this case, uh, you have the chelating group. Now, you have this kind of confirmation. Now, this nucleophile can approach this side and you can get this compound as a major product. You can see here the ratio is more than 99 percent is 1. This is called chelation controlled product. Here the first example involves conjugate addition that we will study later. And the next example involves the addition to aldehyde. You have the chiral center here and the back side is you can see here is uh, back blocked by phenyl group. Therefore, the nucleophile approaches from the top side and you can generate this as the major compound. So, in summary, uh, we have seen the principles of uh, the reaction of organometallic reagents for the carbon-carbon bond formation. So, if carbon is bonded with the electronegative atom, that carbon is uh, positively polarized, it can act as an electrophile. On the other hand, if the carbon is bonded with the electropositive element, the carbon is then negatively polarized, which can act as a base or nucleophile. Then we have seen the preparation of Grignard reagent. See, it involves oxidative insertion. If you have alkyl or aryl halide, you can try to react with magnesium to give the addition product, which can act as a nucleophile or base, which is sensitive to air and moisture. This reagent is to be prepared in situ and you have to react with the electrophile. We have seen some of the examples. First, we have seen the substitution reactions. If you have alkyl aryl halide or a substrate having good living group, you can try to react to the Grignard reagent. You can make a new molecule via carbon-carbon bond formation. Then also we have seen the addition reactions. If you have aldehydes and ketones, you can try to react and you can generate alcohol as the product. Then we have seen the reaction with carbon dioxide, which can be converted into carboxylic acid. Then we also have seen the reaction of amides, nitriles, they can un readily undergo reaction with the Grignard reagent to give ketone as the product. Then we have seen the cross coupling reaction, if you have Grignard reagent that can be readily reacted with alkyl or aryl halides via transmetallation using nickel, nickel palladium based catalytic systems, which are widely used in synthetic chemistry for the construction of carbon carbon bonds, which is known as Kumuda coupling. Then also we have seen stereoselectivity in the addition of Grignard reagent with carbonyl compounds. If the carbonyl compound has a chiral center, the alpha carbon atom, you can try to generate a new stereogenic center. And since the carbonyl group has two phases, depends upon the uh, nature of the substituent, you can try to introduce the nucleophile selectively. You can generate the diastereomers. We have seen one example where the alpha carbon has a chelating group you can make a chelation intermediate, which can readily now undergo reaction with the Grignard reagent. You can try to selectively produce one stereoisomer comparing to other. And with this, we conclude this lecture. Thank you very much.